Joe, I know you have personally reviewed over 500 issues of the Casco Bay Breeze, and I know I've done quite a few of myself, and I will tell you this, there's not much in this newspaper about children. No, not much. So we're going to dedicate this episode to just about everything that the Casco Bay Breeze had to say about children. Okay, then I think we should get started. This should be a pretty short one, though. Okay. Thanks for listening, everybody. No, I'm kidding. All right, let's get started. (laughs) The first, and perhaps maybe the only, editorial there is on children is brought to you by Post Toasties. Good at breakfast, lunch, or supper. Delicious Post Toasties. A new dainty of pearly white corn by the makers of Postum and Grape Nuts. Toasties are fully cooked, rolled into thin wafers, and toasted to a crisp golden brown. Ready to eat from the box with cream or good milk. The exquisite flavor and crisp tenderness delights the most fastidious epicure or invalid. The taste lingers. Popular package is 10 cents. Large family size is 15 cents. Okay, take it away. Children don't know how to play. 1908. The value of the playground as a training school for the development of individual character and of those qualities which make for good citizenships is something which the American people are only just beginning to realize. The fact is that, as a nation, we do not know how to play. We have worked too hard, grown too fast, taken ourselves and our commercial success too seriously to allow for the growth of that day spirit, which has done so much towards shaping the character and making the history of other nations in all ages. We have excitement, plenty of it, in certain conventional forms of amusement. But the real spirit of play, such as lay behind the folk games, dances, and festivals that were the natural expression of the pleasurable elements in life to the people of older countries and older times, has been almost entirely lacking. And yet, we once had a good deal of it in the days when barn raisings and corn huskings, quilting bees, apple parings, and other primitive diversions that made play out of work form the greater part of the simple social life of our forefathers, who brought to this new country a recollection of the games and festivals in their old homes to be modified or added to as the exigencies of life seemed to demand, until that life began to move at such a rapid pace that everything was left behind save the desire for advancement and for gain. It is the sign of a return to more wholesome things that we are at last beginning to realize how much we are missing that is worthwhile and most encouraging that this realization has become vivid enough to crystallize into a definite movement towards the restoration of more normal social conditions. At present, This movement is embodied in the Playground Association of America, an organization of which President Roosevelt is the honorary president. So it didn't help me know any more on how I would help children learn how to play. No, I don't think, except for it said something about the days of when we used to turn work into play. I mean, it sounds like they want to have children working more. I don't know. That's the only thing I took from the article. And that there was an American Playground Association. I guess uh, sell more swing sets. But there weren't anything (laughs) about swinging or or anything or playgrounds or... All right. Well, let's move on. Um, How about uh, reading an ad for the next piece? Summer Borders and Cottagers. Keep clean. Send your clothing to us by parcel post to be naphtha cleansed. Prompt service, reasonable prices, all work hand pressed. Foster's Dye House, 80 to 82 Oak Street, Portland, Maine. Well, 
Okay, you can get the clothes clean, but how did the kids get it dirty? Well, see, this next piece is entitled Children Need Exercise in 1907. The schoolroom is a menace to health. Oh my gosh, it's a menace. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. The schoolroom is a menace to health of the child, which at the present time we cannot escape. As the methods of preventative medicine develop and enforce themselves upon our municipal authorities, the ventilation and overcrowding of our schools, the defective methods of handling the children's wraps, and the lack of medical supervision will be corrected. In the meantime, we can do much to protect our children by caring for their general health in the manner indicated and by thoroughly cleaning and airing their school wraps and school clothing each day. The hours of study outside the school is ambitious. Clever children must be so regulated as to give the child an abundance of exercise in the open air. If there is any evidence that the school life is having a bad effect upon the health of the children, the cause should be looked for. And if necessary, he should be temporarily withdrawn from the school. That's signed the National Congress of Mothers Magazine. Okay, there's also another one from 1908, which uh, has to do with uh, teaching children to learn to swim. So here's what it says. Parents would do well to make their children learn to swim during their summer vacations. One never knows when one may be called on to save a life. And the earlier one learns to swim, the better, as children learn much more readily than adults. An occurrence at South Harpswell Monday should be an object lesson for the parents. The little newsboy on the Acasisco, while selling papers on the wharf, saw the boat starting off without him. He ran and jumped on the stern, but missed his footing and went down into the whirlpool, kicked up by the propeller. He knew enough not to open his mouth to yell and strangled to death with his throat full of salt water, as many older people have done, but struck out at once for shore and scrambled out none the worse for the ducking. He had learned to swim only a few weeks ago. Was it Providence? Our next story is brought to you by Center and McDowell, which is actually one of the ads that actually mentions the word children in it, it says, white canvas oxfords for men and women, barefoot sandals for misses and children. Complete line of the above footwear now ready. See our window display. That's Center and McDowell, 539 Congress Street, the footwear fitters. Who puts white shoes on children? It's a very good question. Anyway, let's, let's hear the next article. Picnics, 1904. <laughs> Portland and Deering School children enjoying Casco Bay's fresh air. The classes of Miss Giles and Miss Adams of the Emerson School, to the number of over 40, went to Evergreen Landing on their second annual picnic Saturday. Miss Knight took her class on an outing to Evergreen Landing, Peaks Island, Saturday. There were about 40 in the party and the day was passed in the usual manner of picnics. Fine weather made the day an ideal one for outings. The Codman cadets clad in khaki uniforms have enjoyed several outings to the Bay and Islands. Last Saturday, they went to Diamond Island. The Codman cadets are connected with St. Luke's Episcopal Parish. The sophomore class of the Deering High School held its annual outing Saturday at Long Island, going down on the new steamer Verona. The party was a good-sized one, and a great day was enjoyed. The class had a picnic dinner, and the day was passed in sports, bathing, and boating, etc. Well, there you go. Uh, Just in case you're joining us out of the blue and you're wondering what we're talking about, we are talking about articles from the Casco Bay Breeze uh, newspaper, which was published between uh, 1901 and 1917. So, anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So what we've gleaned so far uh, about children and uh, from the Casco Bay Breeze, Mm -hmm. school is bad. School is bad. That's true. I've always thought that. Uh, As a child. Children need to learn to swim. They do need to learn to swim. That's true. Uh, Field trips are good. Because school is bad, field trips are definitely good. And for some reason, white shoes are important. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. And you can take those white shoes. And actually, in this last little article we have, you we can uh, go to the circus at Cousins Island. So here we go. Delightful outdoor event given last Saturday. Attractions, many and varied, large attendance. Cousins Island had, on Saturday, the greatest show on earth. Norton Circus was the show. Barnum's was the only circus once, but Cousins Islanders can see nothing but Norton's now. The performance took place at 2.30 p.m. in Gurney Square. Hundreds were unable to gain admittance. Those that were on hand early saw plenty of talent with a big T. The parade was headed by a chariot driven by Dorothy Norton. Number two chariot was driven by Arvilla Morrison. Number three chariot driven by Margaret Carr. There were several wild animals in cages, one of which was captured in the wilds of Little John's Island and has not as yet been classified. The route of the parade was through the Beechwood Avenue and Cousins Boulevard to the post office, returning through Ashland Avenue to the square on the Seashore Land Company's property. The parade was worth going miles to see. W.H. Norton was general manager and ringmaster and made such a success that there's talk of making him mayor of Cousins Island. Mr. Charlie Gurney was the ticket seller and he oversold the supply long before the performances. I'm trying to figure out, was this a fake Cousins Island circus where the Norton family lives on Cousins, created this little circus parade? I don't know. They're they're comparing them to Barnum, and I can't imagine that uh, they could do that without having an elephant or two. Well, they have an unidentified creature, right? <laughs> it's probably a moose that swam over from the mainland. Uh, it's probably a beaver or, you know, some right, side, a woodchuck or, or whatever they have Whatever the they had there. I'm very curious about overselling tickets. Right, and why that's a good thing. But, I mean, people were standing in line to get into this thing. But my question is, how many children were there? Oh, none. There were no children. <laughs> Come on. There's no children on the islands, according to the Casco Bay Breeze. Okay, well, normally this is where we would have a recipe from the Casco Bay Breeze. Um, in honor of the post toasties that we had earlier as a, an advertisement, and because there really were no good recipes for children and since you know we're trying to honor the children here we're not going to give you an actual recipe uh from the casco bay breeze but we did find a post toasties cookie recipe from some time in you know the last hundred years and we're going to give you that instead so give us the go ahead and give us that one if you don't mind post toasties cookies three egg whites one cup of sugar one cup of coconut one cup of nuts, and three cups of post toasties. Beat the egg whites until stiff. Add sugar gradually. Then coconut and nuts. Add post toasties. Drop onto cookie sheet, ungreased. I sometimes put them on the um, parchment paper. Cook in warm oven, 250 degrees until crisp and brown. Beware of humid days, not a day to cook these. Oh, they don't get done? They never get done. It's a very slow, tedious process. These are basically meringues, but they're really good. So please save some for us. So forgive us for not uh, giving you an authentic Casco Bay Breeze recipe, but you know, we were one of the few places where you can get honesty in broadcasting. So there you go. Well, the cookies are almost done, so while they're cooling, what are we going to be doing? Well, I thought we could close on something from 1903, which uh, was actually something by a child that was published in the paper. It was called A Song for Casco Bay, and it goes something like this. And it, uh, the credit is, by a schoolboy. It says, I've come from many miles away to view the scenes of Casco Bay with salty wave and spicy tree Oh, Casco Bay is the place for me. I love her hills and flowery dales, her glowing sunsets and her gales, 
I love her people kind and free. Oh, Casco Bay, the place for me. Well, that's about it for us. Time to put the kids to bed. Bye for now. Bye for now. Oh, the cookies are ready. Oh, come on, let's go.